Hello, this is Matthew Mosher, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about color schemes today. A uh, color scheme is a relationship between different colors and describes the overall look or feel to an image or sculptural work. We'll start with the basics and easy ones. If we have an achromatic color scheme. The A means not, so it's like not chromatic. Chromatic or chroma being color. So an achromatic color scheme is one without color. Also known as uh, grayscale or black and white would both be achromatic color schemes. Here are some examples of achromatic color schemes by James McNeil Whistler. And uh, it is art and painting, so these are not a uh, color scheme is not a very strict rule. You can see both of these images have some shades of uh, pinks or oranges or blues or greens in them, but they are largely grayscale. And it's because of that that certain things stand out, like the the red fan that the man is holding. It becomes a focal point of the image because of the color contrast. Here are some more. These are charcoal drawings by Kathy Kollwitz. And you can see, again, these truly are achromatic grayscale, no color whatsoever. Just the paper and uh, different values of the drawing media. Now, compare that to a monochromatic color scheme. In this case, there will be color present, but mono meaning one, uh, and again, we've got chroma for color, so monochromatic is just a single color. So it might be a single um, hue of blue and just different shades and tints of blue within that. So here, uh, during Picasso's um, life, he went through a rose period and a blue period where the dominant color feel of his images was either red or blue. And again, there's some, some leeway and freedom here. You can see the guitar has a slight uh, yellow cast to it, but the image overall is monochromatic blue. And when we talk about color, it's important to notice the, the difference between tints and shades. So in the blue painting, the tints are the colors that have that take the, the hue, which is the base blue, and add white to it. So like the hair and the skin are tints of blue, whereas a shade is the hue with black added to it. So you can see on the right-hand side, there's a heavily shadowed region. Part of the shirt has a big shadow on it from the guitar neck. Those are shades of blue. An analogous color scheme is like a monochromatic color scheme, but if you took one step on either side around the, the color wheel, so you can include a little bit more breadth of color in an image with an analogous color scheme, but still keeping it in the general realm. So Mark Rothko was a master uh, analogous color scheme painter in his piece here, yellow, orange, and red. has those three analogous colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. Interestingly, his paintings are usually quite large in the realms of like 9 by 12 feet or at least 4 by 6 feet and are made by building up layers and layers and layers of very thin paint, very, very thin paint. So it's, it's um, not as a instantaneous a process as it looks. We can split the color wheel in half to get warm and cool colors. The warm colors uh, are things that feel warm to us. So these are typically the reds, yellows, and oranges possibly because fire is 
is red, yellow, and orange. It makes us feel warm. Cool colors are the blues, violets, and greens. And they, if we see an image that's largely blue, violet, and green, it will feel cool to us. Mixing the warm and cool can add a lot of depth and impact to a composition, which is what Monet does with his uh, haystacks and grain stacks paintings. As you can see in this one, the cool colors make up the background, the sort of trees or mountain range in the distance are blue, the sky is a cool white gray color, and the field has this cool snow covering it. But we also have contrasting that the very warm sunlight hitting the haystack and, and lighting up the hay and straw so it feels very warm and it makes it really stand out against the background. If you have a chance to see these paintings ever in a museum or gallery, I encourage you to go because there's a, a sense of light in these paintings that just doesn't come across in a, a screen image. A complementary color scheme is a color scheme that includes colors opposite each other on the color wheel. We call those two colors complements. So for instance, yellow and violet are complementary colors. Uh, they're colors that typically clash with each other. If we're trying to figure out what we're going to wear that day, yellow and purple are pretty loud uh, colors. Other complementary color pairs that are common are like blue and orange, red and green. Uh, those are the three big ones. Andy Warhol used complementary colors a lot in his work, particularly as you can see in this self-portrait here. And there's quite a vibrancy that's created between the complementary colors, particularly looking between the like cyan blue and the bright red. Uh, it almost looks like there's a, there's a line between those two colors, but there's, there's not. It's just your, your eyes have trouble handling that, that harsh color contrast, and so it vibrates. Triadic color scheme uses three colors that are usually equidistant from each other around the, uh, the color wheel. And Roy Lichtenstein used the triadic color scheme a lot with the addition of white and black in his sort of pop art comic book like paintings, but these are they're quite large paintings. They're also about four by four feet, and but it is like a blown up comic strip. So if you get close, you can see the sort of half tone dots that you would have gotten uh, in a in a close up of a 1960s era comic book from the printing process. Tetrad color scheme is is probably the most complex one uh, that we've seen so far. Um, it uses four colors in a rectangular shape around the color wheel. And it allows for, for much more complex color combinations. So this is Takashi Murakami's panda. And you can see in it the sort of yellows, greens, blues, reddish pinks and there's some orangey browns in there too so four different colors around the color wheel this one is a little easier to make out by Roy DeForest uh, the the red blue and yellow with green color scheme here it's your standard uh, food coloring pack variety of colors Something else I want to show you is this great website called Color Scheme Designer. Um, and give me a second to pull that up and I will show it to you. Okay, here we go. Here's the Color Scheme Designer. And with it, I can select a color scheme from up here. Right now it's on mono. And then I can click and drag this little dot around. 
and it's going to give me over on the right the primary hue that I've selected and then it will give me two tints and two shades of that hue and when I've got my mouse over these different areas that funny uh, six digit hex number it's giving me that has letters and numerals preceded by a pound sign is actually the the hex code that you would type in if you were uh, designing a web page and you wanted to use this particular shade of violet blue for something you could type that code in and it would give you that color. You can also type that code into a program like Photoshop if you wanted to to get that exact color loaded up into your digital paintbrush. So we can go through all the different color schemes here. Complement, you'll see it's added a second dot that always stays opposite the main one. I can just get a complementary color scheme. I could do the triad. The triad is nice too because it now it lets me also manipulate the second and third color it's adding. So I can make that sort of a an isosceles type triad or a, a equilateral triad scheme. Tetrad gives me the box. Uh, and again, I can adjust whether it's a square or rectangle. This one, for whatever reason, I always feel like I'm, I'm designing like a tropical resort. Because it's like no matter how you twist it, you're always getting some kind of Hawaiian shirt print color scheme. They've also got the analogic here, or analogous. And you can pull those in, too, if you want. And uh, an extra one they have that I like is they give you a, an accented analogic. It's like an analogous one with a complement thrown in across from the main color. You can also adjust uh, the saturation of this. So these are all very saturated hues, but we can, we can tone that down, grade out a little bit, and go back and work with a much... Uh, less saturated palette with this program. So uh, this is a neat thing you can use and play around with to help you not only learn these different color schemes but also if you want to uh, explore creating a color pattern for a project that you're working on. Alright, so now is the time for you to bust out your paper and try a few little exercises here. Feel free to pause the video as I'm just going to flip through these. But what I'd like you to do is try to identify the color scheme in these images. And try to identify how the color scheme affects your interpretation of the image. Here's another set. And here's the final set. Alright, I wanted to talk a little bit more about color, just some detail things about uh, local color, emotional color, and, and other aspects of color. We are very receptive to color. It acts as a sort of emotional language for us when we're viewing an image and it can trigger emotional responses in us. A very classic example is this bubblegum pink color called Drunk Tank Pink, and it's kind of like the, the color of Pepto-Bismol. And it has an amazing effect of calming people down. If you paint an entire room with this pink and throw someone in there, they'll become calm for about 15 minutes. It only lasts about 15 minutes, and then if they're agitated, they might get agitated again. But... It's, uh, it's been used in police paddy wagons when they're going to pick up a bunch of people. They'll paint the inside pink, and it immediately calms everyone down. Also, there was a college football coach who painted the visiting locker room in the football stadium drunk tank pink to try to mess with the, the opposing team. 
when we talk about color, there's a, there's a few terms we should know. Hue is the name of the color. Uh, cool colors are the blue-greens and the violets on the color wheel. Warm colors are the yellow, oranges, and reds. Saturation is the pureness of the color. Um, and what that usually means is whether it's a straight hue or if it's been desaturated by adding gray to it. A completely desaturated color is gray. It has no unique hue to it, such as blue or yellow. Shades are uh, made by adding black to a hue, and tints are made by adding white to a hue. So we have local and optical color as well. The optical color is how we perceive, what we perceive the color of something to be. And this can change based on the lighting situation. So if it's a dark out, we might perceive something being a dark gray, but then if it's, if it's very bright out, we can see that color is actually navy blue. It's not that the color changes, but our perception of it changes. Local color is the hue of an object created by the colors its surface reflects under normal lighting conditions. So if you have a very uh, shiny object, it may reflect other colors that are in the room and appear to be a color when it is, in fact, just very glossy. We also uh, can think of color as a symbol. We link mood with color, um, feelings and behavior can be symbolized with color, and these meanings can be culturally specific. So for instance, in America, oftentimes we associate the color green with money. So as an in-class activity, bust out your paper and write down what emotions and objects certain colors make you think of. And those colors are going to be red, blue, green, and yellow. And don't use money for green, because I already gave that one away. That's the end of this mini lecture on color. Thank you very much.